very much. So I hope everyone can hear me uh, on Zoom and in the audience as well. So um, uh, in this presentation, I will uh, mostly show you uh, use cases of AlphaFold in our team that it's uh, mostly on, at least only on protein for uh, single stranded RNA positive viruses. For <laughs> viruses protein, because uh, there is something that you have to know also on, on uh, alpha fold databases, more or less on the SM folds, they uh, publish uh, hundreds of uh, millions of sequences of models, but uh, it's very hard to find your uh, protein, various protein model inside those databases. I still haven't found mine, for example, which is very great as well because I can still work on it and publish it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, I have three case examples to show. Uh, the first one is on um, my main project, so the project for which my uh, my uh, funding agency gave uh, <laughs> me So it's uh, the uh, replication polyprotein of the hepatitis E. I have another uh, use case on the two protein of the hepatitis C and another use case on the um, two protein of the norovirus. If I have time to talk about the last one, but I will try to be uh, first. <laughs> So first, uh, let's talk about how AlphaFold can help you to lead your experiments. Because so far, for this protein, we don't have any structures. There is no structures. And uh, to have a bit of, of, uh, of um, background of hepatitis E, to uh, convince you that this is an important topic as well, uh, it's in fact 20 million every year. It's killed 70,000 people every year, every year, mostly in developing countries. As I said, it's a single-stranded positive sense RNA virus. Uh, it means that actually inside the gut seed, you just have one RNA uh, molecule, that it is in the good sense uh, to be uh, directly translated by the, uh, all the mechanis uh, mechanism of the host cell. And there is four genotypes, depending on the country you are, you can be infected by different genotypes. But we'll only, uh, I only work on the genotype one because it's the one that mostly infects developing countries. So this is a small uh, uh, draft of the HIV genome. You have uh, three different open reading frame. Uh, you have the open reading frame two that code for the capsid protein, the open reading frame three for the phosphoprotein. But the most important one is the open reading frame one that code for a polyprotein. And this is the one that I work on. And in 1992, someone uh, tried to uh, uh, see what domains you have, what protein domains you have inside this uh, polyprotein. And uh, it was based on bioinformatics analysis from the seconds you, you had uh, at this time, so in 1992. So not a lot of sequences and not a lot of different uh, methodology that can uh, produce uh, I mean, good results. But even then, they, they said that in... Uh, at the end, you should have a polymerase, uh, a polymerase uh, uh, domain, an helicase domain, a macro domain X. They thought that you could have a protease domain and a Y domain and a methyltransferase domain. So, and I said they thought because the position, the presence of the proteinase domain is still under debate from the, in, uh, in the HIV community. And in uh, 2019, there was a team that came and released a crystal structure exactly at this position where you have the red square. And um, actually it showed that it doesn't have any fold of protein as inside, but it looks like a fatty acid binding domain. And I will talk about now more. But I'll just say that because here it's quite unclear where the domain boundaries are in this protein. And if the, this protein can be uh, cleaved by uh, uh, protease inside its sequence. And here, AlphaFold can help us to investigate. And we are in the team of, uh, in the group of people that think there is no protease, because actually from the results we have from the experiment, so this is made by uh, Sonia Fiolen, one of my supervisors, and uh, it's not clear. It's full, and the, or the small burn that you have uh, just above, it's actually a contaminant from the methodology we use. So it's, a, it's an acetyl CoA. And we start to have now some uh, pictures uh, in uh, electronic microscopy in negative staining. Uh, so it means that we start to have a bit more data, experimental data, to get these structures. 
but it's not enough yet. It's not enough to get a proper structure and to you know, find how many domain boundaries you have, and how many domains you have and the domain boundaries. So of course you all understand where, where I'm going. We use AlphaFold to try to investigate this. And this is this. I hope it will be okay. Yeah, it's okay. I like to, to show this animation. It's a, sorry, it's a bit slow actually on Zoom, but it's to show actually that I have five domains, uh, five distinct domains, and I choose to color and to make the atom wiggle a bit from uh, the confidence of the prediction. So when it's red and when it's move a lot, it means that the confidence in the prediction is that it's quite low. And you see that the domain, the confidence in the domain is quite high. And the only confidence that is bad is on the linkers. So this is good because this is what we expect. So we have model with very defined. Uh, we have model with very distinct uh, domains, and um, yeah, we look at this a bit closer. And what I did as well is to just use the color, the domain uh, boundaries published in 1992, and when we can. When check this, why some domain, domain boundaries is, is okay, like the, for the polymerase here and the helicase, there is some uh, domains, like the X domain, very small, just a few helices, no structure at all. Uh, it's not really structured, I mean. Uh, you have the so-called protease that is half structured, half disordered. Uh, in the disordered region that should be between this uh, so-called PCP domain and X domain, you have a structure, a small, small structure part as well. And uh, yeah, so it, it shows that it's quite, uh, it's quite, uh, it's not this, I mean, on the AlphaFold models. It, there is an incompatibility between the previous decomposition and the model we got. So I will focus on the, the first part of the PCP uh, domain, I mean, the so called PCP. <laughs> there is a lag, sorry. <laughs> uh, so, here, uh, this is the, the model that I had, the structure that was published in 2019. It's almost the same, and it was very great because it's, uh, I mean, this is <laughs> what we expect. I mean, not exactly because I'm just going to have information and we come back with that. But the most important thing is that there is no protease food inside. And we look a bit, uh, how we, I, I, I uh, said before that it looks like a fatty acid binding like. Uh, fatty acid binding domain because when we look in structural databases with a methodology with like fold seek or Dali, we have a lot of match and all these matches correspond to acid finding uh, fatty acid binding proteins. So we think that this protein can have a similar role as well, a role that wasn't de maybe detected on this part of the sequence of the polyprotein because everyone thought that it is it was a protease. And something that it is very interesting between this, uh, this fatty acid binding uh, domains and our model is that we have an extra uh, C-terminal helix that is going above this domain with a small helix, you can see it here, a small helix that is going inside the core of the protein. If you look at fatty acid binding domains at this position, oops, sorry, yeah, but this position, it's a, it is the place of the fatty acid. So it looks like this helix try to take place inside to just uh, you know, fill the gap inside because this is a very hydrophobic area, so you should have something that fills it as well. And uh, this part of the uh, modelization was also uh, quite a bit difficult because we had a lot of different confirmation on this uh, model depending on the, the alignment we use. So we use different type of alignment, alignment with sequences that we got from MMSX, from HH bits and with default value and HH bits with the maximum version. And depending on that, we can have a lot of different uh, uh, models. And it's almost that we can imagine easily a, a conformational change that can be triggered by something. We don't know what yet, but, but, but that can change the conformation of this protein and for maybe uh, insert uh, the insertion of a ligand of fatty acid, for example. It's, we, are, we are not sure yet. But AlphaFold um, alpha was very useful for that because uh, this, we really think that there is something to dig in here. And we asked money to the funding agency <laughs> to try to test it. So uh, yeah, AlphaFold helped us to construct grant as well. <laughs> 
Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And uh, I wanted also to uh, make a small, or open a small parenthesis on uh, uh, before alpha fold. So as I said, I'm in the group of people that think there is no protease. And this is a paper of uh, some people in the group that think that there is a protease. In 2014, they made a homology model based on um, a protein as a protein. And uh, this is what they got. So this is a template. This is the model that we they got and say, oh, it's very clear. We have a protease here. And it was mostly based on the localization of a few cysteines that are very close together. And um, uh, okay, so maybe I'm uh, biased in my view, but let's be honest. It's not so it doesn't look like who thinks it is, uh, it looks like this. Okay, so <laughs> almost like me. So it was um, uh, alpha fold really help us in that as well because it allows us to just get rid of. I do not say that previous methodology is bad enough, and everything that is was published before is uh, is wrong, but it really improved what we have now. And uh, just to uh, see it, maybe uh, to quote a famous uh, knight of the uh, round table. <laughs> uh, I, I just this is a very French joke, but. I would like to say if I serve this in a in the tavern keeper, you will get a piece of bread in his head. Just to say that it's not good at all, <laughs> these type of structures. So alpha fold, alpha fold really helps us uh, on that. And uh, another thing very interesting on this, um, on this protein is the uh, possible oligomerization. So before, in 1992, uh, people used to think that you had two domains in the beginning of the sequence. And actually, what alpha fold shows us is that this structure, this part, uh, is you can actually find a structural homologue. It's uh, a non-structural protein one from the chikungunya virus, and it looks almost the same. It's very, very close. And this uh, this part of the sequence is actually not uh, uh, you don't have any break at all. It's a one full domain. So from six domain inside this protein, the NSP, the of one we think that there is more like five domains, distinct domains. And this protein, the, this NSP1 of the chikungunya, if you look at it on the PDB, it's not in a monomeric form, but it's in a pure uh, oligomeric form. It's a dotecamer. Ah, wrong timing. <laughs> so yeah, it's a very, very nice dotecamer. And the author actually think that this can bind the membrane because on one part of, the, of this dodecamer, you have a more hydrophobic face. And this can form, I cannot see it well, but it can form a crown above the membrane where you have a vesicle with the RNA inside. So this is what the author of this structure thinks. And when we look at, at our dodecamer, up, so it's quick model, uh, dodecameric model that I made by aligning copy of the same protein and the on the NSP1, we have the same uh, hydrophobic uh, interface. So we also think that this dodecamer can bind uh, the membrane. But it wasn't enough. We, we didn't want it to just made one uh, copy of protein on this uh, reference structure to have a model. So we try to model, uh, to, we try to model the dodecamer. And we start with the dimers. And from the dimers, we already had something very, very interesting. So we have, if this is five domain, five model, we have different orientation. But if we look at the first one, you see that the PIE matrix is, uh, is very red. And here, it's, so it's very uh, close to zero, actually. So alpha fold is very happy with, with its own um, uh, modeling. And um, we, when we take this one, we can realize that we almost have a, a dodecamer. It's, if we continue to form, like uh, to just continue uh, the model with the same orientation, if we have something that it form a cycle, but it's not a perfect dotecamer. It's like helicon. We have a pitch of uh, almost 56 onchon, and uh, the cycle has uh, 11, almost approximately 11 monomer patterns. So it's not perfect. So this was made actually with a tool developed here by uh, uh, Chantal uh, Prévost. And it was in a Congress a few weeks ago that she told me, oh, you should use it. You see, it's very, it's very great. And she also told me, but uh, you see, if it's a bit pitched like this, I have something to flatten it. 
I said, well, Chantal, <laughs> please, it would be very great. And this is what she done. And she gave me a few days after I gave her the, 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 the dimers, a perfect modelization of our do de camera like this. And it was super great because it was quite hard actually to model a, a let's say a physically compatible, uh, I mean, a model uh, of a do de camera compatible with the law of physics. <laughs> because I had clashes everywhere when I tried, it was quite terrible. And if I look a bit on, on this one, you see you have very uh, exposed helices on the side. And those, um, those helices are quite hydrophobic. It shows very strong hydrophobic interfaces. So we also thought that it could bind to the membrane. We also have uh, some, I can try to show you here. Ah, it's easy here. Uh, some positively charged interface, and this is a good sign of membrane binding as well, because since the membrane is charged negatively, you need a positively charged interface that will create an electrostatic gradient that will drive the protein to the membrane. So I used different methodology to try to predict where could be the membrane. The first one was uh, something that was developed in my previous team in uh, Bergen, in Norway, the team of Natalie Reuter, when they made a model of uh, based on the shape of the protein. So it calls the hydrophobic protrusion model, but just to, in, a, in short, uh, short story, it's just that if you have hydrophobic, several hydrophobic, very, very exposed and very close together, they are called co-insertables and they are a good sign of membrane uh, uh, binding sites. And here we see that actually uh, in the dodecameric form, we have co-insertable uh, everywhere, hydrophobic protrusion and co-insertable everywhere in this hydrophobic interface. So it is a good sign. I also tried another tool uh, developed in the team of uh, Zoe Cornia here, <laughs> called the Dream. And uh, it's the, the residues that I got from the predicting, uh, from the prediction of the membrane interface were in the same, uh, in the same uh, position as well in this, uh, in, on this uh, exposed area. And of course, maybe the reference that everyone should use as well, to just to check, oh, sorry, spoiler. Uh, it was uh, OP, uh, so the PPM uh, server that used a membrane, implicit membrane model to calculate uh, the orientation of the protein above a membrane. And uh, first I got this, so I was a bit uh, confused <laughs> because it's low, um, it almost looks like I, you know, you have a flying soccer just crashed. And it's it was very it's very funny to see, and uh, but of course since it's a dodecamere, it's also involved that the membrane uh, maybe uh, it's not transmembrane. I have to say that it's not transmembrane. It's above the membrane, so it's you cannot have this other <coughs> flight membrane that will fill all the this side that is twisted a bit. So I use a curved model, and this time uh, we can see that all uh, dodecamer, all the EVC hydrophobic interface of the dodecamer, actually are predicted to be in some way, to be bonded to the moment, unbonded. And it was very, very nice results. But I have to put a small warning on this, because of course it's not this curvature that we are exp uh, that we expect but more like the membrane should bond like this to form like a vesicle. So the, the dodecamer should be maybe a bit more unbonded inside the uh, under the membrane plan, but because it's, this is uh, this is uh, this hydrophobic interface that may uh, you know, re just hold this vesicle. And um, yeah, so this is why I like these pictures because it, it was just to illustrate what we think, we, we hope that it's something like this. Uh, so you see that the moment is curved, you have the basic here with the RNA inside and going through this pore. Okay, uh, oh yeah, and last thing, of course, maybe you will have a question for me that say that why we do not uh, see uh, oligomer in electronic microscopy, uh, because this is a question that I had as well. <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, when we look at this uh, uh, dodecamer, we can see that the interface that bind to the membrane are part of the dimer itself. So if you have one chain in blue, one chain in, uh, yeah, in less blue on the screen, <laughs> and uh, you have on each, uh, each of each chain, you have uh, aromatics and uh, positively charged residue, mostly lysines. 
So you need, we think that we need the membrane to start um, an oligomerization because this is where the, this is when we have the membrane that you will have, uh, once again, maybe, <laughs> Um, uh, oligomerization where the two chain would come and then it will uh, bend the membrane a, a, a bit a bit when uh, when more we have more units that will come let's say and this is also a good opportunity to ask money for uh, to our funding agency to try to test it <laughs> so uh, round number two <laughs> that we just asked we didn't, we didn't have it but uh, this is how alpha fold asked us as well to get uh, more people in the team to make this test yeah. So of course, as uh, Jessica mentioned it, you have now methodology to test oligomerization. And I wanted to try with AlphaFold first. And um, I tried with the Dotecamer itself, so 12 units of my uh, small uh, domain of uh, almost uh, 50, uh, uh, 500 amino acid. And of course, it's not enough. I have an RTX A6000 with 50 gigabytes of memory, but it's not enough for uh, for uh, AlphaFold. So I asked uh, Jessica if she has agreed to maybe uh, give me her uh, GPU because you have a better GPU. And she told me, well, you know, when it's big like this, uh, you don't have a, you lost a lot of signal with the intention mechanism that you mentioned just before. And I didn't believe her. I mean, I believed her, of course, but I wanted to see it by myself. And uh, since it was too big uh, for uh, this dodecamer, I tried with a decamer. And uh, after one full week of calculation, so no, I couldn't use my GPU. I even couldn't use my computer because uh, when you run out of uh, GPU memory, it starts to eat a bit on the, on the RAM, actually. And uh, my 256 GB of RAM was fully taken. So uh, after one week of calculation, I got this. Well, it's not very really great. And actually, if you look on the second pictures, you can actually see that even some amino acids are not even connected together. Mm -hmm. So I was, I had this erection. Really, when I opened the first model, I was like, oh no. Actually, I just had one model because it's just one week for one model here. <laughs> so I was a bit angry. So it didn't work. But there is other methodology. First, we have Omega Fold. Once again, uh, not enough memory here. I haven't dig enough. But uh, on Twitter, I saw a very nice tweet uh, about um, another a new methodology called uniform, uniform symmetry. And they published this animation. And it's called, oh, this is great. This is exactly what I need. So I, had, I was like this. We started in my heart with full of hope. And I uh, used it when the code was released a few weeks ago. And uh, first I was, um, okay, it's, it's a dodecamer, but the orientation was, I mean, when I look on the side, the conformation was completely different from what we had from AlphaFold. And I was a bit disappointed at this time because this is, this, it's not what, what we are expected. And this is something that actually was, is very interesting is that the conformation of this domain, the meti domain, so the first uh, domain on the sequence, only AlphaFold can produce a confirmation that uh, we think is true. And we think it's true because there is structural, uh, structural, um, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so there is a structural. And um, all other methods produce something that is a, a bit wrong, not on the full whole domain, but just a bit. So here it's not, uh, I mean, unif uh, uniform symmetry didn't work. But it's not because it doesn't work on all cases that it doesn't work at all. Last week, uh, a colleague of mine asked me if I can produce a primer of a small protein. So I said, yes, I just uh, did it and uh, did it to her. And I said, oh, yeah, it's perfect opportunity to also try uniform symmetry again to see if it can work. And actually, uh, maybe on Zoom, it's a bit better for other people. But on, uh, so the two structures are quite similar. You have a lot of, um, a bit of differences in these loops and the helix network here the helices network it's a bit more open in uniform symmetry but i mean it's, it's very similar so this um, i mean you have to try if you have something that doesn't work with one methodology try uh, you have to keep trying with another one i mean we don't have any choice <laughs> we need results <laughs> And I tried as well uh, something that was released uh, last week uh, or two weeks, I can remember. 
uh, called the ESM from for the Meta AI uh, group. And um, I didn't have enough uh, GPU memory for the Dote camera, but I still wanted to try for each individual domains because what I've seen from Unifold Symmetry is uh, the problem was not the dodecimerization, was the modelization of the single uh, model or just the, the, the monomer. And it's because only uh, AlphaFold provides us the right monomer that we can construct the right dodecamer. So on the polymerase, it's why it's uh, okay ish because it's, uh, you, we have this uh, a more uh, unfolded part. The helicase was very, very similar. The same for the X domain. Uh, the F fatty acid binding like uh, domain was actually quite very different. So this one is quite informed. And in which back, something that I said before is that only AlphaFold gave us uh, the right information for this domain as well. Uh, and we got a lot of information depending on uh, the sequence, uh, the alignment we give. So I think this is something very critical for this, uh, for this uh, specific domain, but you need the right multiple sequence alignment. If you don't not to give the, the good one, you, the conformation is uh, either open or no other conformation. And for the Meti domain, the demerize, it's also okay-ish because one part is okay, uh, but the second part, it's completely in a different uh, orientation. So still not, still not bad because there, is, there are some domains that are uh, well modelized. And uh, for something that you can just run on Pymol, I mean, if you have the right plugin, you can just, uh, you, can, you can do this in Pymol. It's, uh, if it's below 400, then it it. Otherwise, you have, you have to install it, of, of course. But it's, um, it's, it was quite good uh, as well. And I had it a last minute slide because I thought maybe it could be interesting um, from the conversation we had uh, in the lunch. So the model that I have is just not one shot with AlphaFold. It came with a lot of different models. Uh, we made 20 different models from different multiple sequence uh, alignments uh, that was provided first by uh, the, the sequence were provided by MMSX for one case. Uh, I charge bits with the default value for the second case, and I charge bits with uh, the maximum iteration to reach even more sequence uh, as well. And depending on this, we have of, we had of course different, uh, slightly different change in the in the domain mo modeling. And here you need a very uh, expert eyes, of course not mine, <laughs> my PI one, <laughs> that say this domain is good, this one is good, this one is good. And uh, then you have, uh, what I did is um, I took all good domains and I use, a, I use them as a custom template, so as a template to AlphaFold. And the end, I just give it back to AlphaFold and say, use this template, please. <laughs> because it was not very easy as well to give templates to AlphaFold. Uh, if you are interested, we can discuss about that because uh, it is possible but it requires uh, to run several jobs, to kill the jobs at the same time where you have temporary file created. It's, <laughs> it's a bit uh, complex, but it's working. And uh, yeah, so this was all for the uh, HIV, and it was the biggest part. Um, what AlphaFold uh, uh, provides us is a very, I mean, what DeepMind provides us is a very great tool to just try to decipher your protein even before you have the structures. And for this domain position, we are, for this domain decomposition, we are very confident uh, to, to that because all other domains converge with this domain decomposition. Now we have to convince uh, people from the HIV community that there is no protease <laughs> and it is the right one, use this one now. <laughs> so it's not a, it's, it will not be an easy task. So I have a second case on the HIV protein. This time a bit different. It was mostly with the collaborators of us based in Germany in Edinburgh University. And um, I will be uh, a bit quicker on that. So <laughs> uh, you have different uh, protein on uh, HIV, but what you have to remember if I NS5A interact with NS5B, maybe other protein as well, but we don't care how long uh, at this time right now. Just uh, I, I work on NS5A and NS5B and they interact with each other. 
if you look at the literature, NS5A uh, is a dimer, should dimerize, and NS5B on the right have a C-terminal helix that is embedded into the moment. You have also a C-terminal transformer helix. So on NS5A, the dimerization domain exists in the PDB, actually on several forms, uh, but it exists, you have it. And the amphipathic helix that binds the membrane exists as well. You have an immersed model of this one. And the authors thinks uh, of this review thinks that it's, uh, um, the model is like this. So it's uh, a model, of course, it's not a structure when you have the amphipathic helix uh, under here. The, domain one, and uh, then you have uh, the domain two above and the do another domain called domain three. So amphipathic helix, domain one, domain two, unstructured, domain three, unstructured. Oops. And for NS5B, uh, the structure exists as well in the PDB, uh, but without its C terminal helix. Hello? Yeah. But uh, the people uh, in the field of the HIV think that it is embedded like this. So first on the NS5A model, what I check is just to model this, uh, this protein uh, first. And what we see, this is the amphipathic helix. This is the domain one. So this is a good thing because the amphipathic helix is predicted uh, as an helix, so it's a, a first win. And then all of the uh, domains, uh, so the domain two is in structure and domain three in structure as well. The only small strange things is that in domain two, you have this um, helix uh, and followed by two uh, strands here. And uh, I say this because it's like a Chekhov uh, rifle. Uh, it's uh, something important <laughs> to keep for uh, uh, later. If I check as well the um, dimer of uh, NS5A, just domain one, and I was a bit uh, actually uh, uh, unhappy because uh, from what we got in the PDB, is com the, the conformation is completely different. But uh, apparently these two domains have, can have different conformation as well from the PDB. Only uh, three or four has been uh, Found. I mean, you can find a structure of three or four different conformations in the PDB. So maybe it's a new conformation as well. We don't know. It's just an hypothesis. And if I look at the, uh, the optimal model from uh, the PDB 101, what we can see is that you have the two uh, helices uh, that can cross like this. Actually, this protein can should have this movement as well. But it's still compatible, our model is still compatible with that. Because if I predict the membrane, first the amphipathic helices are unbounded, so this is cool. And if you look at this, you see that it should form a cross. You have flexible linker in the model. Uh, so it's not hard to imagine that this can change your orientation and just. Uh, so it's just a conformation, a static conformation. Here, maybe uh, some MD could help to see if we can uh, have something better. But uh, yeah, this is what we have. And on the dimer of the NS5A, the full lens, what we have seen is that uh, first you have, uh, sorry, where is this? Yeah, you have some, the same interaction between uh, the domain one, but you have a new interaction between the two uh, small parts, the structure part of the domain two. So I said that you have small ellipse followed by two strands, and actually this dimerized. And it hasn't been detected before by any experiment. And actually, when I talk about that to our collaborators, they don't, uh, didn't believe us uh, in the beginning. So uh, this is why we have spent some money <laughs> to try to produce only this part and crystallize it to show that maybe it can demerize from this. And I think this is, we got something very interesting here. Because in all the models, it was always predicted to bind as well uh, on this uh, on this uh, on this position, and I think this is something that maybe was missed by the experiment because people used to think that it is unstructured. So uh, you don't try to cut small part like this to just check if it can generalize or not or interact or not. But alpha fold can find it. But the amphipathic analysis on this model was uh, wrong on three and or, or five I mean, three out of five models. Uh, the helices are under between the domain one and the domain two, so you cannot add a membrane here. So it was a bit disappointed. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, as well for the oligomerization, something that was very interesting to detect, to first detect where you could have your uh, demerization interface or just contact is to use the PIA matrices. So if you don't look at this matrix before, uh, you should because it's very, very, very useful information. Here we can clearly see with a small island we have here that we have a very uh, uh, um, uh, interaction predicted with a very high confidence. So, I mean, AlphaFold is very happy of itself on this position. And for NS5B, uh, so this is simple. Uh, the structure we got, the core structure is the same as what we have in the PDB. The helix is modeled in the perfect orientation like it will fit the membrane. So we, uh, we were super happy. And uh, I said that NS5A interact with NS5B and NS5A can demerize. So we try a dimer of NS5A with a monomer of NS5B. And tada, this is what we got. And uh, it's super great because you have a lot of interesting things on this one. First, if you look at the PA matrices, you see that you still have this uh, new demerization interface, possible in demerization interface, on the domain two. And the NS5A interact with NS5B through its uh, D1 domain. And this is also known to bind on this position, unfortunately. So then you can change a bit, but uh, yeah, it was uh, mostly here. And it was super cool because uh, all this should bind the membrane. And uh, if I show you this conformation uh, like, just like this, I guess you can all uh, guess where the, the membrane. So when you predict the uh, orientation of the membrane, this is what we, we, we got. It's almost like it's coming out of the book. It's so nice. And it's just alpha phone. So it was uh, very, quite fantastic on this, uh, on this project. And uh, very quickly, <laughs> another one. Uh, and uh, neuroviruses, same, no structural protein. Uh, this is a model that I made in 2017. Uh, PI came and asked, Thibault, I need model of non-structural proteins. And I said, uh, wait, non-structural protein, you mean a, a protein without structures and without homolog? <laughs> and I said, yes. <laughs> so I use a Raptorix uh, server to find maybe some uh, close relative or far relative structure for each of them. Uh, it was not great. So I predicted the secondary sequence, uh, the secondary structure from the sequence. Uh, and then I modeled helices by helices, I just patched them, put some tape for a non structural part, I just draw them by hand, basically. It was a, but it was to make a model based on what we know at this time. And when AlphaFold was released, I thought, well, I should step back this sequence and try to see what, what can happen. And I got this. So it was first a bit different for SS1, 2, because we don't have this transformation segment, and we think that there is one or two transformation segments. But here, I think it's because the conformation of the helix is twisted, so we cannot predict to be bound to the membrane like this. So uh, yeah, maybe we have to dig a bit more about, on, on this model about the, this transformation segment. But on the side, you can see that you have two helices like this. So I mean, if they are right like this, maybe they can bind to the membrane. And um, yeah, and these two proteins should, uh, NS12 and NS4 should interact together. And our colleague uh, from the University of Heidelberg, so this is experiment made by Robin Lenstra and the team of uh, oh, uh, Volker Neumann. And um, uh, they say that NS4 binds to the membrane, uh, NS12 interact, uh, NS4 interact together. Uh, if you delete uh, the first 20 amino acid of NS14, NS12, NS4, sorry, it will uh, no longer localize to the membrane. Uh, if, uh, but it will still continue to bind to NS12. And apparently, we have five amino acids that are very important in NS4 in the interaction of the two proteins. So we use this and we check that. We, we just check um, uh, what uh, all this. Uh, result from the experiment, if we can find an explication in our models. So this is NS4. You have the amphipathic helix, helix uh, the long amphipathic helix here. And the 20 amino acid are in the beginning in red, meaning that apparently this is, I mean, it is predicted to bond to the membrane. So this is a good sign. I mean, if you delete this thing, apparently it doesn't bind to the membrane. This can be explained just by this model. And the interacting residue are 
on the end of this helix and they are facing, uh, they are exposed, meaning that they are accessible for NS12, for example. And we try, if you try to see the dimerization between these two proteins, we only had one model when NS12 interact with this uh, uh, five amino acid, but it was a good news because it was the best model according to alpha -Pol. And we had uh, a possible sort of bridges between the two proteins. Uh, I mean, I mean, said possible because the distance is quite far away right now of between the two. But I mean, it's still, uh, it's still, you have an arginine in glutamine and arginine in spartate, uh, not far away. So you have a possibility to form salt bridges here. So it was very interesting because it was in, uh, in accordance with the experimental results. But we also got something uh, interesting is that NS12 interact with the first part of the helix that should bind to the membrane. So we have a bit of a, a non correlation between the experiment results, but I guess at least we can dig a bit more into the, into the experiment as well to just check if what we have here is interesting uh, or, or not. So to conclude. Uh, so yeah, AlphaFold uh, provide a really a better understanding of our protein. Sorry, so you don't have the full uh, sentence. I don't have as well um, for domain decomposition. It's uh, actually show very good accuracy for membrane bonds proteins and self assembling proteins. But you still have to be careful of what you see, of course, of what you have, because sometimes we know that it can cross the membrane and the model is in conformation that doesn't cross the membrane, that cannot cross the membrane. Uh, the modeling of a cyclic membrane bond oligomer with uh, exposed hydrophobic interface may be possible, which I think you can agree with me, but it, but it is a, a very complex uh, modelization. And this is my next point. Uh, it's uh, alpha fold shows spectacular success in modeling difficult proteins and protein oligomers. And uh, if you want to look at oligomerization, you should definitely also look very closely to the PIA matrix. And if you don't know exactly what you are looking at, I uh, suggest you to look at the Chimera X software, which is very great because it can take as input as well the, um, the PIA matrix, and you can see the interaction between the different part of the protein based on that, and you have a YouTube uh, tutorial on the share. And the last thing uh, to finish is that um, it seems that alpha food is super great for a lot of things, but it's not all, it's not super great for all things. Like I uh, saw so on Twitter, uh, some very nice example that it doesn't work. Uh, here you have a lot of clashes. Here you have a lot of spaghetti. Uh, this helix is very strange. I mean, this uh, tunnel as well, this beta barrel as well. And uh, this protein, for example, is very nice. But if you know what this uh, protein, for example, uh, in the expert of the field will say that it's not good because uh, you miss some uh, folding of the helices that actually uh, are transmembrane. They, really, they should be transmembrane, this thing. And they do not, they are not uh, modelized as transformant protein in, in this model. So uh, AlphaFold is super great, but it cannot replace you. Uh, I mean, uh, in French, we can say uh, la patte de l'expert or the expert eye. So we still have work to do, I mean, for us. So I will have to thank, uh, I want to thank my funding agency, the NRS, my project uh, leaders, uh, Stéphane Brassanelli and Sonia Fiolen, or collaborators as well. Uh, and uh, Raphael and Jessica uh, for helping me to uh, work with AlphaFold in the beginning of my postdoc, and, uh, and of course you for your attention.